Okay. Hi, I'm Elliot Fisherman, and welcome to our latest Facebook Live. Our new day that we're doing this is on Tuesdays at 12.30. I have pancreas conference between 11 and 12, or 12.15, and then I'll come back over, and we'll do the uh, Facebook Live. So, appreciate everyone being here. So, this topic this week I thought would be on graduation speeches. So, let me be clear. I hate graduations. I hate graduation speeches. When you go yourself and you have to listen to somebody saying the world is wonderful and you're going to change the world and it's the greatest day and you know, all the usual things because all of us have been to graduations. Um, I challenge most of you to try to remember who gave the speech at your college graduation, who gave the speech at your medical school graduation. You don't remember. You probably don't remember anything they said. And you probably only think when you sat there was, oh my God, when will this end? So in saying that, um, I do have to admit that I really do like graduation speeches. You know, in, in this year, there'll be hundred, hundreds of graduation speeches at the college level and beginning, obviously, medical school and high school and the like. But if you could choose the graduation speeches that did make a difference or do make a difference, and you listen to them, it's really worthwhile. Remember, a graduation speech is not an hour-long oration. Typically, it's under 20 minutes, maybe close to 15, but let's say 20 minutes. So you can listen to them, um, and you can go online. And if you notice lately on CTSS, since this is the graduation season, I have been posting a number of different things. I have been posting both lectures that I thought were terrific, links to large series of lectures where you can make decisions of what you think is terrific, but also quotes for some of those lectures. So let's look at some of them. And I think it's also good for us to learn what those things tell us. Now, I will tell you at first, there is no one who said, take it easy, do nothing, slack off. There is no one who said, if you work eight to five and you work the minimum, you're going to succeed incredibly. There was no one who said, don't work hard, let's slack off and dump the work on the person sitting next to you. So no one said that. Although sometimes you wonder, someone must have said it because there are so many people, it seems, who don't really want to work hard, who are looking to do the minimum, but somehow they want to get a trophy. Everybody wants to give the opening address at RSNA or the equivalent but no one wants to put in the effort that it takes to give that opening address. So let's look at the practical side of things. Now, there is many ways of judging who has given the best graduation speech, and um, you know we're not gonna argue over the edges, but I think the one that many people typically say is the best is Steve Jobs' talk at Stanford 2005, and we posted the other day. What was special about this talk, it was so personal, and I think the talks that I've liked have been really personal. When someone tells you about how they learn things and also talks to you about their challenges and their success, successes. And Steve's talk was very much that. He, for the first time and probably the only time, went through some of the difficulty literally beginning with his birth through his later years. And at that time, he was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which eventually uh, took his life. But he did really stress about looking ahead, enjoying your work since it takes so much of your time. And then, you know, you can plan, but recognizing that the plans often don't work out as planned. And it's only in retrospect that you know the right things to do. One of the things he mentioned, and many of the other people have mentioned, is the ability to fail. That if you think you're always going to be right, that's the first mistake. And in the building up of your career, it does, you can be wrong and, uh, you know, learn from those errors, but you need to build on it. If you only are trying to be right 100% of the time, you're probably not going to aim high enough. <clears throat> you're not going to be that successful. Uh, Ed Catmull spoke at Hopkins three years ago. And that was his thing about error. You need to give people the leeway to make errors. You'll learn a lot from errors. You don't want to make the same error twice, and you don't want to make constant mistakes. But there needs to be the ability to not always be right because you have to be right every time you kind of move things along a millimeter at a time. If you want to make the great strides, the great inventions, the great discoveries, 
you're going to have to be willing to take, at times, a leap of faith. At times, you're going to have to challenge the status quo. You just can't be doing what everybody else is doing over and over and over again, expecting to get a different result. And whether it was Steve's talk or Ed's talk, there was a wonderful talk about Larry Ellison from Larry Ellison at USC about two years ago. It's a wonderful talk. And Larry Ellison does not give very many talks. Um, and he made the point that, you know, he was supposed to be a doctor. His family thought so. He thought so. After two years at USC, he dropped out. Eventually discovered computers, discovered nature, and became the third or fourth richest man in the world. He spoke about how, as he was going through this discovery, as he was going to these failures, his family, which never graduated high school, disowned him because they felt that he was not going to be anything. And how could you drop out of college and not go to medical school? That was your uh, destiny. That was supposed to happen. He spoke also about his first wife, who, as he was, quote, unquote, finding himself in nature, as well as computing and getting by, felt that he would never be successful, and she just basically cut her losses and moved on. And obviously, uh, Larry's aim was not to be the fourth richest guy in the world or have Oracle. He wanted a small company, but can't always plan how things work out. Uh, and, and it does make for a very interesting way of thinking about things. Now, I did also um, put down a number of different uh, speeches that I thought some of the quotes were really important. Um, one of the things people do talk about is, you know, integrity and, of course, honesty. And that's kind of a little bit uh, the same lecture you heard in eighth grade, graduation, high school, graduation, college, medical school. But there was a good quote, a good talk from Ellen DeGeneres, Tulane, 2009. The most important thing in your life is to live your life with integrity and then not to give in to peer pressure to try to be something that you're not, which is a really, really good quote. Um, you know, people have spoken about that. Um, Oprah Winfrey at Harvard, uh, they pull this one quote from her, and I'll read it. Even though this is the college where Facebook was born, my hope is that you will not try to go out and have more face-to-face -face conversations with people you disagree with. Uh, that you'll have the courage to look them in the eye and hear the point of view and help them make sure that the speed and distance and anonymity of the, our world doesn't cause us to lose our ability to stand in someone else's shoes and recognize all that we share as a people. It's kind of interesting that talk was given five years ago at Harvard. Facebook was a very small company, um, but I guess you saw where Facebook could be going, where people simply talk to one another in characters, be it Twitter, or in Facebook where you have this persona, which is probably not real. And it's been shown for many people that actually Facebook makes them more unhappy because their perception of what they should be doing or could be doing isn't what they're really doing. There's a wonderful talk also, when we go back to this era and this trying by uh, J.K. Rowling at Harvard in 2008, and it's a wonderful, wonderful talk. She speaks about, again, the fact that she was a disappointment to her parents in terms of her major. And at some point she decided that, uh, hey, it's time to move on and do what made her happy. Um, her best quote, it's impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you failed by default. And that probably is a really, really good quote. I think her speech is a very, very impressive speech. I really, um, she has a certain way of delivering things. Obviously, it's a woman who could not afford the paper to write Harry Potter on and who then became a billionaire from writing a bunch of Harry Potter books and everything. Uh, just an amazing, uh, it would be an American success story, except for the fact she was born in England, that she's English. So it's an amazing English success story. But her thing is about being able to look and choose and think. Um, again, very much the same parable as whether it's Steve Jobs or the like. And, and I think that's maybe a good takeaway message. Now, there are a number of other talks people have written. Uh, there was a great quote from John Stewart from 14 years ago. College is something you complete. Life is something you experience. Don't worry about your grade or the results or success. Success is defined in myriad ways, and you will find that people will no longer be grading you. It will come from your own internal sense of decency. 
and a good way of looking at it is, is that. But going back to what I said initially, and I don't want to be sitting here reading a bunch of quotes, and again, on CTSS, we probably put up 100 quotes that you'll see over the next two weeks. But I think it does kind of force you a little bit to look at things that if everyone is telling you you need to really aim high and then recognizing also that you may not get there, but at least you'll, you'll, you will have that opportunity of really trying to do something, it really is in conflict with a lot of the things you hear at your institution now, whether you're in medicine, law, wherever you are. You know, this balancing of life and work is so critical. Uh, we all know that. But I think what we have been doing is setting unreasonable expectations for, and maybe not the word is expectations, but it, we're creating a really a false reality for people. What happens is you try to tell people, oh, don't worry, you don't have to work that hard, you know, you, oh, it's good enough and you'll get by and don't worry, you know, enjoy, enjoy. But the reality is, is, is there a really dirty, dark secret that you're not paying attention to or you're avoiding? All of those people who tell you, the dean, the president of the university, wherever you are, telling you, oh, you know, the balance and all this, and, you know, kind of come, you know, leave early, leave late, do blah, 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 blah. None of them are leaving early or coming in late. They're working seven days a week. They work long hours and they're very successful. The dirty secret that people are not telling you, but every speaker at every talk at every institution is telling you is that if you want to succeed, if you want to be successful, if you want to change the world, if you want to live up to the, the possibilities that you have in you, that you've spent 20 years or 30 years or 40 years developing, it's only going to happen if you put the time in and you work hard. It is a mistake if you think you're going to give the opening address for RSA or the opening address for any other meeting of any value, and you're going to skate by working minimal hours at minimal power, publishing essentially nothing, writing essentially nothing, discovering essentially nothing, then you will at best be sitting in the audience if they let you in the room at all. It is a dirty, it is a error, I think, on my part, because you're creating false expectations. Again, it goes back to the idea that everybody gets a trophy. Now, everybody may get a trophy in fifth grade or sixth grade or even 10th or 11th grade. But once you get out of high school, there is no trophies for everybody. There is a separation. When you want to go work for Google, number one company in the world, they don't just take whoever applies. They look very carefully. They do 15 or 16 interviews. They select, they choose. They look at everything you do, your passion, your experience, what you think you're going to do and what they think you're going to do. If you say, hey, I'm here, come hire me, I want a free lunch, you don't get past the first interview. You may not get past the fifth interview if you're good, but if you're great, if you have that pizzazz, if you have that passion, you know, you will get to that 15th or 16th interview and get the job. And whether it's in academics as well, whether it's surgery or medicine or pathology or radiology, if you're just getting by, and if you think you're going to be professor and chair and God knows what, and giving that address, you're making a terrible mistake. And I think people need to be honest. You need to balance life. You need to do all the right things. But you need to be realistic. If you're doing little, you're going to get back very little. I would not be, you know, I, I think you really have to know that if you want to be extremely successful, you're going to have to work hard. And working hard does mean there's certain sacrifices. There's no doubt about that. There's nights, there's weekends, there's time. There's putting the pen and writing the article. There's doing the research. It's dealing with other people. There are many things you need to do. But... At the end of the day, every speaker, whether it was Steve Jobs or Nick Selby or John Stewart or Dave McCullough, every single name, Oprah Winfrey, Steve Colbert, every single person said the same thing, that don't worry about failure, but they all said doing nothing is automatic failure. 
So if you're in a situation and you think you're going to get by because the winds are going to create all sorts of ruffles of whatever, you're making a terrible mistake. It's not going to happen. I'm here to tell you it's not going to happen. Believe me. Now, maybe you won't believe me, but um, just look around you at the people who are very successful. I don't care what institution you're in. I don't care what department you're in. I don't care what job you have. For the most part, most of those people, unless your father left you 20 billion, you know, your father uh, made you the president of the company. But even in those cases, most of the time, those kids are working really hard. Look at Buffett. Look at any of the people. Their kids are succeeding because they're succeeding on their own. So the days of just assuming things are going to come to you, the days of making those assumptions is a giant mistake. So I'm here to tell you, listen to the lectures. Listen to one a day. You can listen in your car, on YouTube. You can listen on tape. Very easy to do. Just listen and learn. There's some really good links on CTSS, and I think it's well worthwhile. And with that, I'll end it right here. I have to go to another meeting. Got to see some people. Got to write an article. Ciao. Yes. Yeah.